Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu and I teach here at Dunwoody College of Technology in the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department. Today we're going to be learning about conduit and conduit bending. We've gone through that three bend saddle for our calculations and now we're going to actually calculate on our, on our conduit, we're going to mark it and we're going to bend it. So once again, we'll use our, our uh, problem from the board where we had a 25 and 9 sixteenths um, obstruction. So I'm going to tape my tape measure and I'm going to come to the end of my conduit and I know that I want to start with my A mark. So I'm going to take and measure out that 25 and 9 sixteenths remembering I did add 9 sixteenths to my shrink for my shrink onto the value. So I'm going to take it and mark it at 25 and 9 sixteenths. Okay. And I once again want to mark it all the way around that conduit so I can find it when I want to bend it. The next mark I want to make is my B mark. So we notice we subtracted that seven and a half and we come up with our B mark at 18 and 1 sixteenths. So I'm going to take in my tape measure and I'm going to mark it at 18 and 1 sixteenths of an inch. And again, I want to take and I want to mark that all the way around my conduit so I can track where I need to bend it. My last mark is my C mark. Now I want you to notice as I'm doing these, these marks and I'm doing the measurements, I'm actually coming off of just one end of the conduit. So I'm not coming from the other side. I all want to take all my measurements from one direction. So I take and I mark the third mark, that C mark, at 33 and a sixteenth of an inch. Once again, marking it all the way around the conduit. So now once I have my conduit all marked, I can take my bender. Once again, we are doing less than a 90 degree, so I want it in that upright position. But unlike the other times we've done offsets, I'm not going to start with my arrow. On a three bend saddle, I want to pay attention and I want to use the notch. If you recall from the earlier episodes that our notch is actually the center of a 45 degree bend. So I'm going to take and put the notch at that A mark. So I find my A mark, which is my center mark, and I'm going to match it up to the notch in my bender shoe. So once I have that marked, and notice I am facing the direction that I measured from again, and I'm going to put that bend in place. And I'm going to take it down to a 45 degree bend. Once I have that 45 degree bend, I'm going to just spin it around and I'm going to pull it here and I'm going to match it up to, lo and behold, the arrow. Okay, so we're going to use the notch for our A mark or center of the bend and I'm going to use the arrow for the other two bends. So I'm going to match this up to my mark. I'm going to make sure my conduit is level so I don't get another dog leg and I'm going to bend it. Only this time I'm going to bend it, if we pay attention to what we are doing, 22 and a half inches. So we're not going to bend it at that 45, we're going to actually mark, match up to our 22 and a half inch mark on our bender. So bend it down and go to my 22 and a half inch bend. Okay, I want to pull my pipe completely out of the bender. And once again, just like on my four bend saddle, I want to bend towards the obstruction. So I'm going to put my conduit in here, match it up to my arrow again because that's my second bend. Make sure my conduit stays nice and straight. And I'm going to again bend it to 22 and a half degrees. Take it down and bend it at that 22 and a half degree mark. And there we have three bend saddle. Now this is one way of doing a three bend saddle. 
and it's probably the most common way to do a three-bend saddle. However, there is a different method to do a three-bend saddle, and that is if I have a very short distance in order to do my bends. The shorter my conduit is to the bender, the more difficult it is to bend it. So if I have to, say, have a, a distance here to my obstruction of, say, 10 inches, I really would have a very difficult time bending that four inch mark into an offset. So there's another method that we use oftentimes, and that's using the three bend saddle all in the same direction. However, whenever we do that, it changes our multiplier. So when you come into that situation where you have to have a very short distance for that three bend saddle, you're going to actually change it. And instead of having a multiplier of two and a half, we're going to have a multiplier of three. So let's change some of our dimensions. Let's say I have to do a bend and I have a distance of, let's say, oh, let's say, let's do an obstruction of, say, six inches. So we have a six inch obstruction, but we have to come and we have to actually have it this close to our conduit end. So here's the end of my conduit. So I have a very short distance between those two. Uh, let's say we have a distance of, say, 30 inches. It doesn't give me a whole lot of room in order to do it. So I can take that conduit and I can mark I have 30 inch distance from here to here, so I know I have a six inch multiplier. So I'm gonna to go to that 30 inch mark here. That's gonna be my mark A. And then I'm gonna mark my mark B because it's a six inch obstruction and because I'm gonna bend it all in the same direction, I'm gonna take three times six, 18 inches. So I'm going to subtract 18 from 30 to give me 12 inches, would be my mark B. At my mark C now, I'm going to once again use that multiplier of 3, but I'm going to take 3 times 6, 18, and I'm going to add 18. So just like we did before, very similar except that we've changed that multiplier value. So I'm going to take my 3 times 6, get my 18, so that means my C mark then is going to be at 48 inches. If I take and use my bender at the notch at my B, A, and C mark, I am able to get it all in the same direction and still make my values that I need to get over my obstruction. So this is an alternative method to our three bend saddle, simpler when we're coming to a short end of a conduit. If you need any further information on conduit bending, please see the Elfman Student Success Center or the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department. Thank you very much.